Hey everybody, it's Chainsaw Reacts back once again with another reaction for you guys. Today, guys, of course, I'm here continuing the journey of X-Men Evolution, and we have a two-parter. Episodes 12 and 13 are a two-parter wrapping up Season 1 of X-Men Evolution, and of course, Episode 12, Episode 13, The Cauldron Part 1 and Part 2. Now, I wasn't planning on reacting to both episodes. I wasn't. However, the way I'm watching the series is a fan's attempt at trying to upscale and basically improve the quality of the visuals of X-Men Evolution, because on Disney+, Plus, it's as is, and I watched the very first episode when I reacted to the pilot, the first episode was on Disney+, Plus. but then I found out there was a fan attempt at rest restoring the show, and I've done some comparison on episodes I've reacted to and everything, looking at Disney+, Plus to the restoration, and there's definitely an improvement for sure, and this person has put together both episodes as one, so I don't know where the cutoff is in terms of where part one ends, part two begins, so maybe it'll be clear in the edit i'm not 100 percent sure here but i'll find that out just to double check and make sure because i'm going to record my review separate but i'm going to film it all as one big video in terms of recording so i'm ready to dive in guys see what they do here um with this i'm, I'm pretty excited for this i'll probably use the same intro for both episodes or whatever it's fine but i cannot wait to see what they do with this two-parter and um we'll see what happens let's dive in guys let's check it out let's go let the weekend begin Forgetting your homework. He doesn't care about homework. Not ignoring it. Evan, is that you? Oh. Oh, so that's the way you want to play, huh? What are you doing? Exactly. <laughs> okay, ass. Fishing, yo. <laughs> you want some of this? Would you knock it off? Yeah, she, like I don't want to play with you, Toad. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is that? Oh shit! It's a shark? Oh! Ooh! Take that! Okay! Oh shit, oh, did you kill it? So what's the emergency? His name is Alex Masters, once known as Alex Summers, Scott's brother. Brother. Oh, okay, that makes more sense. I love the Deuce Freeber, by the way. I love it. That's cool. Oh, and Logan, let's be prepared for trouble. He's gone with me. Well, it saved your life, thankfully. Oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit. I know the kind of pain you're feeling, Alex. I once had it myself. Your bones, they burn. Your hands ache. The pressure in your head. I can give you relief. I am Magneto, and I have come to still high to go. Sanctuary. What? My little brother. He's. Yeah. He's alive, mm. Scott. Oh. Alex is alive. I should have been looking for him. I mean, I just accepted it. Why didn't I? Easy, Scott. Take a breath. Let's go. Le leaving your bag. Left behind. And no one knows that Gene's been taken. No one knows that. Well, it wasn't intentional. Scott, meeting a brother he hasn't seen in like 10 years? I wouldn't want a crowd either. Where are you going? Hello? Road trip anyone? Are they seriously? Okay. Interesting. Hustle it up, Rogue! Before Aunt Yo shows up and dry docks our plans. Is that mistake? Is that mistake? Oh my god, it was! I was like, I was just like, hey, what if? Change of plans, they're on the move. And the tide's coming in. This cove will be underwater in an hour. Take a closer look around. Hmm. Looks like company dropped in on him. Literally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, literally. The same way. Who's Magneto? Oh, they don't even know? I got a feeling you're about to find out. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. I know you're here, Magneto. Oh, he's fucking with the plane. Oh, shit. Okay. He's just flying the plane. Oh my god. Alex? Really? Was that easy? Scott! 
Okay. <laughs> and look at you. What happened to that scrawny little kid I used to pick on? Oh, hey, that reminds me. Hey. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> I owed you that for ten years. When Magneto told me you were showing up, I... Whoa, wait. Magneto? Mm. You're with him? Yeah. Well, that guy just kidnapped my professor. He wants to show all of us. Oh. All of us yeah, what? you know, mutants. He told me you were one. I got these powers growing inside of me. Yeah. I was freaked out until Magneto clued me in. This just doesn't smell right, Alex. But I'll go. Just to keep an eye on you. This is weird, right? This is weird. He's still holding on. Keep holding on, man. Come on. I am in control. Yeah, you are. What is this about, Magneto? Well, Wants to show you something, apparently. We're taking steps to ensure our survival. The man with the adamantium claws. Of course, adamantium is a metal, and I'm sure uh. you realize that I am the master of magnetism. <laughs> No, no one's Professor? home. Here's the problem. Mystique's in the house, and it's like, didn't question anything. Well, look what the cat dragged in. Mm. <laughs> you had no chance. <laughs> the road. Avalanche, yep. What is going on? It's Let obvious. It yeah, it's obvious. Oh my god. <laughs> Come on, hit the wheels, hit the wheels, idiot. At least you're on the road. Oh, really? Poor Wolverine. He was doing pretty well, and then, you know. Hard to stay afloat with metal bones. Oh, God, of course. <laughs> Why do I get the feeling? I didn't think about this till just now. This also confirms Sabretooth didn't die from that explosion. Whoa. Welcome, Charles, to Sanctuary. Asteroid M. We finally get to see him. Okay. Okay, this is crazy. They waited to reveal him until all this. this awesome. A rebirth. Your X Men face a trial by fire. One shall lose, one shall win. Oh, okay. Those who emerge victorious shall take their place here on Asteroid M. They can then fully realize their mutant abilities, safe from those who might okay. mistreat them. Magnus, don't do this. It's a dark future that rushes towards us, and we must it's face not it wrong. prepared. Mm, but not this way, I don't think. That didn't take too long at all. Oh, come on. You guys think it's that simple? There you go. Yep. <laughs> You're staying behind! And, yep. Every time. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. It's over. And here comes your reward. Give up and I'll make this quick, Wind Rider. I mean, I shouldn't even have to shock the shit out of you right him. away. And you are not welcome here. And now you're gonna be taken by a ball. And when you think about it, Toad got beat twice. <laughs> Tell me where Magneto took Xavier. The gathering is almost complete. Your invitation begs the question. What happens to those who won't come willingly? Yeah. If necessary, sometimes salvation must be force-fed. Oh my gosh. But for every unbeliever, Oh, come on. Okay, guys, I just finished part one and part two of the Cauldron X-Men Evolution, of course, two-parter finale to wrap up this season, and this is my review for part one. Now, the ending of the episode, I had a, I actually have the episode pulled up here. The ending of part one is where it is, it's implying, even though it's quickly resolved in part two, like right away, but the implication is at the end of part one that Scott is on the side of Magneto because he's walking in with his brother and everything. So that was like, what the hell? And like, if I would have watched just part one without watching part two back to back, I would have been like, what? And then a week later or a couple days later, shooting the next episode, like, oh, okay. But like right away, it was, okay, they quickly fixed that. So in terms of just part one, talking about just part one specifically, 
So it opens with, the, it's a weekend coming up and Toad is automatically there. And I'm, I have a shot pulled up here and the shadow of it, because she opens up the bushes, Jean does, because she hears some rustling in the bushes and you see a shot and it's like clear as day it's Toad based on how he's jumping into a bush out of sight. And so Toad fights Jean. And I want to say Toad had no chance. I think Toad made a bad choice. Now, I don't know, like, see, with these fights that we see throughout part one to kind of decide who is going to be chosen, I don't know if they have to, if they have to be told by Magneto who to face. Because, of course, the X-Men, they had no idea this was a thing. Only Mystique and, like, her, the Brotherhood, essentially, like the, 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 the recruits on their side knew about this test. So, did Magneto tell Mystique, you have to go after Storm? Did they tell Toad, go after Jean? But see, the thing is, Toad went after two different people, because the X-Men have more characters, they have more of a team than the Brotherhood, so I guess he had more, I guess you have another shot if you lose. So, I don't know if he was told to pick Jean, but that's a bad team up, because that was just, Toad had no shot. Toad had no chance against Jean. So Jean wiped the floor with him. She didn't know what was going on. It, 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 I love how they played it off too, where Jean was like, I don't want to like, she didn't say this exactly. But she's like, I don't want to play this game with you. I don't want to do this. Like she was just tired of playing with him because it wasn't really a fight at all. Like he was just getting his ass handed to him. And then here comes the orb where we've seen throughout the two part episodes of these orbs. And sometimes it will force you with like these tentacles and stuff. And they like you know, metal tentacles, they pull you in. And then the orb goes away, like it does with Jean. Other times, when Scott goes in there a little later in part one with his brother, like, you know, it's it's there's no forcing, so they just jump in. So I guess it's just for uh, measures of, okay, you're not going to for you're not going to voluntarily come, you're you're going you're to need to be forced to come. So, with this first fight, no one realizes for a good while that Jean's gone. Nobody knows. And I'm like, come on, guys, seriously? And so, I'm skimming through here because I, I want to make sure I, I'm not missing and forgetting anything. Of course, you have the intro. Intro's really cool. Love the intro. And, oh, by the way, with the X-Men Evolution title, I don't get into too much here because I want to save my thoughts more for part two because, obviously, these are two separate videos. Um, but, yeah. Interesting with the title, Evolution. It kind of makes more sense now. So, it opens after the intro. It opens with Havoc, Scott's brother, uh, who they have not realized that they've been, you know, set that, that, that the, cause they, they've always thought the other passed away and we see the flashback in part two, what that means in terms of like what exactly happened, which is pretty dark. Uh, but I'll get to more of my thoughts in part two on that, but opening with him on the water, he has some friends, he's just chilling and he's paddling along with a surfboard. And then there's this shark. Now it's, it's, it's an, it's not like a, great white necessarily it's just some generic evil looking shark and then that's where his powers manifest for the first time because what he even mentions later in part two and it kind of reverts back to part one because i because it, of course we're just now seeing him for the first time it's not like we've been spending a lot of time with this character building up to him revealing having powers he was saying in part two that he you know has went to doctors because he has all this pain and it's like burning and now he knows because when he uses powers against the shark that's when it first, it seemed like it first manifested because the way he responded to it, it's like it's clear that that surprised him and he didn't know what to do, but it's like he had to defend himself. So, I thought that was interesting. And then, of course, the new Cerebro, which looks awesome. The new Cerebro comes into play because the new Cerebro picks it up. And uh, and, and the design is like very reminiscent, of course, of the X-Men anime, uh, X-Men anime films, the X-Men live action uh, original trilogy films with the original cast. Of course, in the comics as well, they've had variations of the Cerebro look or whatever. So it definitely is paying homage to a lot of that different stuff. Then Magneto shows up. Now, I like the fact that they finally give us the first the first official look at his face. And his helmet comes off. I'm trying to remember if that was in part one or part two. But that does occur. But in this scene with Havoc, he's still hidden in the darkness. And the first time we actually see his face is later on when we reveal Asteroid M his basically new compound if you will because i guess during this whole time when he was had the castle in operation he was secretly building operation or asteroid m not operation m but he's in the darkness and of course he's telling havoc certain things and being non-specific we don't see where he tells him about his brother which of course he shows up later and they actually get to hug and reunite for the first time in so long but he tells havoc everything 
pretty much. Obviously in his own interpretation. But he's still in the darkness. Now, obviously, <laughs> and they do it twice in the Scott twice forgets his bag. He forgets his, well, he leaves his bag in the car. And Gene's like, really? You're going to forget your homework? You're leaving your bag? Oh, the weekend. And then the next time he's like, my brother, we got to go. He leaves his bag. <laughs> they get on the jet. Now, apparently, they were, they, they, I guess they all thought, because there was no actual word of, we're going to go travel and do a vacation on the beach. The rest of them thought, like, no, not the case at all. And they're gonna, then they're going to go on a road trip, and they're going to get into a bunch of fights. Normally, I don't do this, but I'm doing this just to make sure I'm not speaking too much, particularly in part two, because that's a separate review. But they get in the car, they're fine, and so Mystique, I jokingly said, is that Mystique is the cat? Because there was a cat, like, in front of the actual uh, carport when it's opening up, and they drive off in that Jeep truck type deal uh, that they have, and then the cat ran past again when it when Rogue was running to the vehicle, and it's Mystique, once again, Mystique turning into animals. Then Wolverine figured right away that that was Magneto. He figured it out right away. And the fact is, too, and they and they also do it with the other characters as well in, uh, early on in part two. But for Scott, Wolverine says it's Magneto. He knows. It's like, wait, wait, who's Magneto? So they don't know anything, literally. They didn't know that Mystique was pretending to be the principal. They have no idea who Magneto is until this moment, until these episodes. So I kind of like the fact that the kids, the younger X-Men, maybe Storm was aware of Magneto, I'm guessing, maybe, who's to say, but at least, you know, now everyone's hopefully on the same page now, I'm pretty sure they were all on the same page, of course, the, re the, re the reuniting of them, the brothers, hugging it out and everything, uh, it was a great moment, but Havoc is, of course, believing what Magneto's telling him, obviously, so it's kind of causing problems, because briefly even though he didn't hear a lot because he just now found this out too magneto is not a good person and scott's trying to tell him hey man you know you gotta be careful but i think the re reuniting was actually a good scene and uh <laughs> i feel bad for wolverine because he's on top of the he's on top of the blackbird but see it was all planned out see i guess magneto knew that wolverine was gonna go to find havoc and then when they're event then he's things Magneto is so strong, but he, but later on we find out in part two how he's so strong in terms of these rays or whatever, like the, the this gem, which I'm pretty sure that's the same gem that gives Juggernaut his powers, I think, um, or at least in the comics it does. I'm pretty sure it's the same type of gem or crystal. You, you get what I'm saying. But it was all planned to get Wolverine to, f to fall and go to the island to fight um, to fight Sabretooth. It was all planned. Of course, we have uh, Mystique versus uh, Storm. Mystique had no... I mean, Mystique had a chance, but ultimately she had no chance, really. Because the opening of the fight, Storm just hits her with lightning, and she goes flying. So there's like, there's no way that was going to work. Of course, we have uh, the Brotherhood, a toe in the back, smiling all creepily. We have uh, Avalanche, all that shit, and they're fighting and everything. And um, obviously, the majority of the uh, Brotherhood wins this fight. Oh, we're going to go see, see here through all the actual fights itself. Of course, we have Wolverine and Sabretooth. And uh, Asteroid M, and then the first official look at Magneto, which I'm trying I'm trying to understand. Like, I get it visually, it's, like, really cool, because Magneto Magneto's an awesome villain. He is. I don't understand why they decided to hide him, necessarily. I don't know. don't know why they decided to hide him until now. But it was a cool reveal. Uh, the fight's going on, and then here comes the actual... Uh, well, there's a lot of discussion back and forth, but now we're getting to the fights. So, uh, you have Avalanche and, um, Nightcrawler you had at one, <laughs> and I feel bad for Kitty because she had to phase through Blob, that was bad, uh, but, you know, the majority of them all lost, I mean, Rogue beat Toad, so Toad lost again, and the winners are Quicksilver, Blob, Avalanche, and Rogue, and they win, and they're being taken by the pods, and then, of course, Mystique loses, and, Ro and a Storm wins this fight, and then taken, and then, uh, and then revealing that the winners are actually put in the stasis, stasis if they're the X-Men because they need to be loyal. And we know where this is kind of leading to in part two in terms of like, hey, you know, they have to uh, they have to be under my control, which we find out in part two how he's doing that necessarily. In terms of, because like, they have to be worthy. And then the, the thing is, there's so many more mutants out there though, right? So like, I feel like he's preemptively building Asteroid M 
wait till there's more because we know there's more mutants out there but i don't know i guess Magneto's trying to plan ahead i guess but i really enjoyed part one to build up all the fights and of course seeing Magneto for the first time introducing the havoc and everything i thought was really really good and uh yeah i'm just gonna dive into part two now for my review for that and so yeah i really enjoyed this part one i thought it was a great build up and I was getting more and more excited. Then we got to part two. I'm like, this is fucking awesome. Like, it was, I felt like it needed to be a two-part. Because if this was only like a part one thing, they would be have to they would have to condense so much. Like, listen, you, you would have to just have the Brotherhood of Mystique show up at the X-Mansion. And then just a giant fight ensues for the first five minutes. And then Asteroid M. They get to cut a lot of things out and a lot of story. So I'm glad that they separated out this out into a two-parter. Because I think it works better in that sense. Because I think condensing this, you could not do it. Or at least it would not be effective. And I don't think people would really like appreciate the episode or at least the arc because it's been building up to this so it makes sense to be a two-parter so anyways guys that's my review for part one hope you guys enjoyed my reaction we'll jump into part two now hope you guys enjoyed the video talk to you guys soon peace out